Okay, it's our last day of a review for the final, and uh, we're going to start with number one on day four. Would you read that one to me, please? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Go ahead. Two to the X plus three. Okay, if you're going to graph this thing, you have got to, uh, first of all, know what the parent function looks like. So, here we go. Would you please start on your little graph by doing the parent function for an exponential, which, by the way, in case you forgot, looks kind of like that. Now, if I needed exact points, exactly where is this thing, um, I would make an xy chart. And f of x is like y. And so then I could make an xy chart like this and find some numbers for x and then stick them in and find the appropriate y value. But since this is... I can do just a sketch on this one. It says 2x plus 3. I can take this graph and move it where? Up 3. Do, do, do. And then it goes through the number 3 on the y-axis and kind of just slopes up like that. That's generally what it looks like. Now, if you wanted exact points, you could take, like, x is 0 and stick it in there. 2 to the 0 is what? 1 plus 3 would be 4. So 0, 4, which is that point right there, is on the graph. And next is, I put in a 1. 2 to the 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. So 1, 5 is on the graph, etc. So you can get your exact points with an XY chart. Don't forget that on any test, even next year in pre-calc. Anytime you have a test, you can look up your points if you want to by an XY chart. Just stick in a number for X, see what happens. Make a little chart like this, graph it, and it pretty much can't go wrong unless you screw up one of your calculations. All right, that's one kind of problem that you need to know for today. Uh, let's look at the next kinds of problems. It says simplify. Would you read me that one? Yep. Like this. All right, so on this kind of problem, first of all, you need to know how to handle something that's like A to the third to the fifth. Do we add those three and the five or we multiply them? It's multiply. It, it would be add if it was like this. No, not plus. Sorry. That would be where you'd add them. This kind, you multiply them. All right, so to multiply these out, I'm going to uh, go this to the this power first. What does that mean? It means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, but then there's this little negative in front of that means 1 over. Okay, so my answer is going to be a big fraction, 1 over a whole bunch of stuff. And now I can do that negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, not 27, negative 27. And now this x to the negative 2 to the negative 3, well, I've already done the negative by making this thing flip. So it's like I'm just doing x to the negative 2 to the third. And the negative 2 times the 3 makes negative 6, so it's like this. Why can't I leave my answer like that? All right, so this, and I need the x too, yes, sorry. Uh, so this x to the negative 6th here must move up where it's going to be happy. And so my final answer would be the negative here could move anywhere. I'm going to move it to the middle, and then I'm going to say x to the 6th on top where it can be positive and happy and the 27 on the bottom. So that involved a lot of little steps. First thing you got to know is that when there's a negative up here in the exponent, that means to flip it, 1 over it. And anytime you end up with a negative on the bottom of your fraction, negative exponent, you want to move it to the top. All right, that's another kind of problem. Let's look at the next type of problem that you see here. Simplify, there still simplifies, but that is pretty complicated. I'll help you with number three. Could you read it to me, please? Over. Okay. All right, 
So my f first step on this would be to see if I can do anything uh, on the top, that whole top that's all going to get multiplied together. Is there anything I can do up there? There's nothing to do over here, but there is something to do there. What does that mean when I put the whole thing to the negative one power? Yeah, you could... Okay, so this little negative one here means that i got to move the whole thing down. It goes down there. All right, because they're not happy up where they are. But that even includes this little negative two, which then is going to be on the bottom. So now I'm going to move that all down, and I knew it problem has a y to the negative second on the bottom, which won't be happy, and this x to the second on the bottom. Why did I do that? Because all of this was put to the negative one. All right, so now it's all on the bottom, and this has been done. Okay, is there anything else to do on the top? No. I'm trying to do the order of operations, which basically says you should do everything on the top of a fraction and then go do everything on the bottom of the fraction. So now I should do anything I can down here. Yes. You're right, except that there's or, this is already on the top. So if I times it by one, I won't do anything. But you got a good point. All right, so now this on the bottom, I can take some things that aren't happy down here, like this and this, and move them up to the top. I'm getting a little messy, though, so I should rewrite it. So why don't you, on your paper, rewrite this. 12x to the, uh-oh, and I forgot to move that guy down, too. Nobody stopped me. That should go down and be happy on the bottom. Okay, so that's going to become an x to the third that's positive on the bottom. Okay, so here's the simplified. 12 over y to the fourth, x to the third, 15. Those are all positive ones. Those are happy where they are. And the negative 2, this one here, we got to move him up to the top and make him x squared. And this one, again, not happy where it is, moves to the top, y squared. And the last one is there's an x squared on the bottom. Any question about that so far? I'm not done. I'm just, okay. So I'm just kind of moving things around based on their negativeness. Okay, next, I'm going to say I can do some canceling. This x squared and this x squared can cancel off because that's all a big multiply on top and it's all a big multiply on the bottom. So I can just, if I see something on the top and something on the bottom, I can just cancel. How about there's a y squared here, which is the same as y times y, and there's a y to the fourth down here, which is like y, 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 y. I can't cancel all of them, but I can cancel two of these y's. All right. And then I think I'm done. 12 on the top. Oh, the 12 and the 15. Darn, you're right. So I should break up the 12 into a 4 times 3. Why did I do that? Because now when I take the 15 and I'll make it into a 5 times 3, the 3 will cancel the 3. And now I'm ready, I think. I think there's nothing else to do. 4 over, and there's two y's here. Don't forget about them. And there's an x to the third. And there's a 5. And I can put that there. And there you have it. Question? Okay. All right. So there's another kind of problem. That it mostly involved... What? There was an x to the third in the problem. That was used to be on the top. But then it, it used to be up here. But then we brought it to the bottom and made it positive. All right. So the kind of the moral of the story on these is that if you ever see this kind of deal... Move them to where they're happy. Okay, so these guys need to move down here and become x to the positive 2. And these would need to move up here and become x to the positive 5. And then some things can cancel. But take care of your negatives first. Question? Okay. All right. So let's do another kind of problem. Flip the page. Write in the form of ax to the n. Could you read me that first one? <laughs> Square root of. All right. A little bit of backstory on this. If I just had this, do you remember how to write that as x to the something? x to the negative 1. What if I had a square root of x? Do you remember how to write that as an x to the something? That's not x to the 1. x to the 1 half. 
The one half power is a square root. How about a cube root then? What's that? X to the one third power. So if I put two things together, like I flip it and have it as an x to the third, then it's x to the third, but what's that one over do to my answer? So the answer is x to the negative one third. All right. So let's do this one now. Does it say simplify? I don't think so. I think it says write it. A, X to the N. So we're going to have a power as our answer. Now, how about this? Can we at least do the square root of 144? Yes. Yeah, what's that? Okay. And I put 12 out front. And then I have the square root of X to the 12th. And I can't just leave it like that. Do you get how this is shaping up? It's going to be 12 X to the... Hmm, interesting. The square root of x to the 12th is not x to the 6th. It's, okay, this is not the 12th root. If there was a 12 here, then it would be the, to the 1 12th. If it is x to the 6th, it's not just because the square root of x to the 12th is the 6th. Because the square root of 12 isn't 6, that's for sure. All right, but think of it this way. Do you get that it's a... Uh, needs a one-half because it's got that square root sign here. Do you get that I'm also going to need to put it to the twelfth power, which is like this? So what's my final answer? It will turn out to be to the sixth. But it's not because the square root of 12 is six. Get what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Let's do another one that's kind of like that. Let's say I had uh, five or square root of 25 x to the third. First of all, it's 5, because we have a square root of 25, and that's 5. And then I got the square root of x to the third left. So I got 5x to the, I think you just said it. You got it. Why is it over 2? Because it's, because it's the square root thing, which is like a 1 half. And that to the third power means... Like, I could put it as a one-half and then times it by three, but it's just going to take me a while, and I'll stick it to the same answer of three over two. So this is what kind we have typically in pre-calc, and you'll see, I think we did some of these even. If you end up with something like this, one over square or cube root of uh, 36, here's what we do in on this kind of a problem. We would first of all say this could be rewritten as a 6 to the something. Because I can see this 36 has a 6 in it. And then I'd have a negative because of this. And then I'd have a third root, so there's a 3 on the bottom. And the last thing is this would have to be a 6 to the what? Let's see if any of you can handle one that hard. Yes? Okay, just let me do one more like this, and then I'll gladly move on. All right, I want you to try this. 1 over the 7th root of 49. Try to write that as 7 to the something. Grab your calculator. No, not your calculator, your pencil. Miss L, what'd you get? Okay. So I need your attention now, and we're going to try this. You're not supposed to be just working on your package. You're supposed to be doing the problems I ask you to do. All right, Mr. M, get me started. Seven, excellent, to the negative because of the one on top, good. Okay, and you can finish it off. If I'm going to turn a 7 into a 49, all right, I think if you would have been with me the whole time, you'd have been able to handle that. Really? Not completely buying that. Exactly. Okay, yes? 
Okay, because this 49 has a base, a number in it that could be squared. Okay, so we try to reduce it down to a nice simple number like 7. All right, could I have written this as 49 to the something? Yep, I could have said 49 to the negative because there's a 1 over, and then this 7 would be the 7th root. It'd be like that. Same idea. Okay, that's another kind you have to do. <coughs> Let's move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, some log stuff. Would you read me number 11? Do you mean log base 4? Log base 4 of what? Uh, Equals n. All right. Then, this is a log equation. When you have a log, you want to convert them into exponential form. All right? If I do that, though, the dumb part is that I have 4 to the n equals 16. Um, and now, all of a sudden, it looks like another problem. Now, this one happens to work out nice because I happen to know what 4 to the what makes 16. What's n got to be? 2. Now, if you didn't know it, like if this had been like 17 or something, where it's not something you know in your head, then you need a, a strategy for answering those. So I'm going to just do a quick little logs review from the very beginning because I think it was a long time ago that we did logs, and I, I think you've lo forgotten a lot of the stuff. So here is a... And I want you right now to put your packet away so that you don't get distracted. Put it underneath something else and get some scratch paper out. If you could hang on for another about 10 minutes, I'll be done for a while and you'll be having some work time. But right now I need your full brain with me and scratch paper out. And then you'll have some break time. All right, if that packet stays out, it will go away. I, I will make sure it goes away. Okay, on your scratch paper, I'd like you to start with this. 7 to the x is equal to 40. This is why we have logs. Because if you had to answer this without a calculator and without knowing logs, you'd end up doing a lot of guessing and checking. You could put like 7 to the first power, and that's 7. 7 to the second is 49, but that's too big. So the answer is between 1 and 2. But to get exactly the decimal, real pain in the butt. You'd have to like play around with it and keep on, it, it'd be complicated. So what we would do in logs, though, is to rewrite this as a log. Log, and the base, see how this is a base number? So the base is 7. Of 40... Notice how I go to the other side. It's equal to x. Why did I do that? Because now on a calculator, I can type in that problem right there, and I can get a decimal for it. And it'll tell me that it's one point something. And I can find out exactly what it is. Well, how do I type that into the calculator? You can't just type log 740. Now, actually, if you have the new calculator with the new operating system, you can but most of you guys are going to have to do this. Log 40 over, do you remember? Log seven. Log 7. And also, I've noticed that a lot of times you get the wrong answer if you don't have parentheses in there. Okay, give it a shot right now. Grab your calculator. Check that puppy in. Just wait. Don't say it. Calculator out. If you don't have one, borrow one. Hurry up. There's the one in my top drawer there. Got to leave me something so that I know who borrowed them. Okay, so log 40 on its own does not answer the question. Log 7 on its own doesn't answer the question, but when I divide them, I get my answer. And what did you get? One point something. Eight, nine, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now those of you that are already done with the first one, type in ln 40 over ln 7. And I'm betting that you're going to get the exact same thing. Now, why should ln and log give you the exact same thing? Are they the exact same numbers? No. Lns versus logs are a different size number. They're all a little bit, well, 
did you notice was it a little bit bigger on the top like the log 40 if you're going to compare log 40 or ln 40 just do it quick side by side and then see which one's bigger our regular logs bigger or our lns which are log base e's lns are a little bit bigger all right so this is a little bit bigger but so is the bottom a little bit bigger if i do it in lns both numbers are a little bit bigger so when i divide them you end up with the exact same thing what that means is this do you remember that if we write a log and we don't put a base that it means base 10 do you remember that it's another important thing for you to know for the final but a log that doesn't have a base is a base 10. Okay, so if we do a ln, what kind of base does that have? Ln has a base of E. Base E. I know we only talked about it a few times, but does anybody remember what E is? It's about something. It's a decimal. It's right up there with some of the other biggies, like 3.14159, which is pi. Okay. It is on your calculator. Say 2.71, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Good. So this one right here is about 2.71. Anytime you see E, it's just a number. It's a special number, like pi is, that's used especially in financial calculations. Um, but... Anyway, long story, but E is an important one, especially as you head to pre-calc. You're going to see that E a lot. Okay, so we were talking about logs, and if you had a log that set up just right, the answer can be really easy. Log base 7 of 7. The answer is duh. Easy. 1. Now you might say, why is it 1? Because if I said it equals x, I don't know what it is, so I put an x. Then I could say 7 to the x is equal to 7. How does that help? Because now I can just see it. 7 to the what would be 7? Seven? 7 to the 1 would be 7. So anytime these two are the same, that's a property, and it equals 1. So how about the other properties? Can anybody remember another kind of problem where you got an automatic answer? Yes, sir. If there is negative anything... In this spot, in the A or the B spot there, if there's ever a negative here, you've got a really simple answer for your final. If it's negative, it can't happen. So what's the name for it can't happen? Say it louder. Undefined. So it would be undefined if either of those two are negative. How about the, these two? Can they be zero? No, they can't. They can't be zero. They can't be negative. And there's one more restriction that you may have forgotten about logs. Something about one. Yes? Good. That's one of my properties that you just said. Say it louder. So if this is like anything, it doesn't matter what it is, 28, doesn't matter. If that one's one, then the answer is an automatic zero. So there's first property. Here's the second property. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, that's a property too, except what's the answer? It would be whatever's up here. That's the third property that you have to know about logs. So if these two are the same, then, then this one's the answer. Again, I can set that up and show you why, because I like to do that. Because That should be one of a math teacher's jobs, is to not just say, well, you can use this little trick. It's because 5 to the x equals 5 to the third. And if I write that, I think it'll make it really obvious to you that x has to be 3. You get that? All right, next little property. If I said log base 10 of x is equal to log of 12, a smart kid could figure out the answer like that. And you could if I give you enough time. Oh, wait, Mr. Server, you didn't tell me what base this is. So what is it? And therefore, what's the answer? 12. Because if there's ever a log here and a log here that are exactly the same, it's not really canceling them, but it's that this will equal that. X must equal 12. 
So here's a trickier one in that same idea, in that same vein. Log of x plus 5 is equal to log of 8. Because basically, it's like they cancel. I know, I just want to make sure you know it's not really canceling. It's really more that this equals that. But it's like they cancel. And you just can solve a little equation. Then. Subtract 5 from both sides, x equals 3. Okay, and they can even make it trickier. And we will, of course, in pre-calc. Uh, there's a lot of other properties that you have to know in pre-calc about logs. But you got the basics now. And actually, uh, you know, that's one of the things that is kind of tricky for kids. So hopefully that will stick with you. At least some of it will come back quickly. We don't really expect you to come in as a master of basic logs. It would be nice if you did, but we'll teach it and then only in like a day. And then we'll expect you to catch on real quick because we've already covered it. And then we'll get to the harder stuff and spend time on that. Okay, so uh, I want to look at a few more logs questions, make sure I've answered all the kinds you need to know. So I'm going to look back at your package. You do not need to take it out yet. I just, just give me a second to look here with this packet. All right. I am ready to do some with you. Grab your packet, and we are going to do uh, number number 15 is what we're going to start with. Would you read me number 15? Good. If you make this into log base 4 of 4 to the something, then you'll know that the answer is whatever this is. So how do I make a 64 into a 4 to the something? It's 4 to the third. So if I change my problem to say this, then my answer is what? 3. So all you got to do is try to take this number and make it into that as a base with some exponent on it. All right, let's skip and do another one a little farther down. Um... Let's do that tricky one. Let's do 16, actually. Uh, Mr. B, could you read me 16, please? Like that? So, it's the same idea. It's just got fractions. You can change that to a two-thirds. Yes, so if I make this log base two-thirds of two-thirds to the something... What would it be? Two-thirds to the what? Two-thirds to the second would be four-ninths, and therefore, the answer is two. All right. All right. Let's flip to the next page. There's some more on the next page that are kind of a little different. Would you read me 18, please? Equals what? All right, and this comes down to you knowing how to rewrite these things. That's a log. Anytime you are stuck, try rewriting it as an exponential. This to the this equals that. 144 to the 1 half equals x. Didn't that make it a lot easier? If you know what to the 1 half power means. I bet you can do this one in your head. What's 144 and then what's that square root mean? A half, sorry, what the half means square root, and therefore square root of 144 is that. All right, so whenever you're in log form, make it exponential. If you're ever in exponential form, make it a log. It's like a tool to like, you know, you use that to solve the other side. Like if it's in one form, changes the other. Okay. And I think that is enough about logs, and it's time for you to have some work time. Okay, we're recording again back from break. So, uh, we have just finished talking about logs. And after logs, the next part is called linear programming. The good part is, we've already covered this on the first day. Like, generally, all you got to do in linear programming is graph a line and then shade on one side of it. The very first one, would you please read me what it says, that, that problem right there. Greater than or equal to. All right, so what I do is I graph y equals negative 2x plus 5, and then I shade on one side of that line. Now, if this is a 
or equal to, it's a solid line. So I'm going to go to 5, put a dot there, and then I'm going to have a slope of negative 2. That does not mean rise 2, it means fall 2 and run 1. Fall 2, run 1. Fall 2, run 1. See how it's going down as you read from left to right? And now I shade. It says greater than or equal to. So the greater than implies go up. That's how you do those. That's the basics. But then remember that if you end up with multiple ones, uh, that you shade like, you know, on this side of this one, on this side of this one, you'll end up with this region. Remember what it's called? Feasible region. And then the corners of that are the things that can be the right answer to the optimization equation. All right. Now, I think there's only one or two questions. There's not many questions like this on the test that are the actual optimization ones. But if you get what they'll have to do, since it's a multiple choice test, is they'll have to, you know, like they can't say graph this because, you know, you don't, you're doing multiple choice. Unless they were to say graph it and then figure out which of the corners actually work. So they could say, is it A, B, C, or D? And then you graph it and you find out that, okay, maybe this one works the best or whatever. Okay, now that part was, let's say this is uh, X and this is Y. And let's say our optimization equation was for each stereo, that's the X's, they make uh, $200 profit. And for each uh, Y, let's say that's a CD player, they make uh, $100 profit then this is one of those optimization equations. Does that look familiar? Do you remember that? And you'd want to optimize it, which means like find the best profit. So you'd stick in this point, this point, and this point, and you'd find how much profit for each of those spots, and whichever had the most profit wins. This spot, for instance, might be like, you know, 20 comma 10 or something. And I'd stick in X is 20 and Y is 10 into my little formula. And I'd figure out which one gives me the most profit. If you have any more questions about that, now's the time to ask. But I don't want to bore you with, because we did talk about this in the very first day of review a little bit. So, yes? Which sign would be? Oh, oh, okay, okay. If you're graphing y is greater than or equal to something, then you go over it. Above it is the way I see it. You shade above it. And if you had y is less than or equal to something, you shade below it. Yeah, can't spell below apparently. Bli blow. Below. All right, if the gra if the line's like this, that's like an x equals 3, then which way do you think? I should shade to get less than. Yes, less than would be to the left because the numbers are smaller over there. Right of it would be bigger. Okay. Um, and if it's straight across, it's a no-brainer which way to shade. You know, if it's straight across, you can see above and below, right? If it's above, you shade above, like if it's greater than. Okay, any other things to clarify on those? All right, flip to the very last page of the packet. That's where you have only one question to review optimization equations and all that kind of stuff. And it gives you the, uh, the constraints. Do you remember the ones where it's greater than or equal to, like this? X has to be greater than or equal to zero. Those are called something. Common sense constraints, yep. Because in the real world, you have to have your answers be like, you can't have a negative number of fish that you catch. You know, you have it, can't, it has to be zero at the smallest. All right. Any other last questions? All right. Then we've reviewed everything. Uh, it, for the rest of the time, uh, you're going to have work time, and you can ask me questions. Um, I will stop to tell you one more uh, little thing in about 20 minutes.